Okay guys, so in today's video we're going to be talking about cleanup crews and custodians for bioactive vivaria. Let's get right into the video. So as a little bit of background information, um, a bioactive enclosure is basically one in which you try to create a sort of slice of a natural habitat by adding in plants and substrate and naturalistic decorations and all that, as well as invertebrates so that you create a sort of mini ecosystem wherein the sort of feature animal, like the um, reptile or whatever that you're planning to keep, um, is like the apex within that community. And then the smaller invertebrates in that um, feed on its waste and break it down so that everything stays clean and you have a really nice naturalistic setup that's both enriching for the animal and also just nice to look at. Um, but when most people think about these, they think about doing them, at least initially, they were done for dart frogs because the high humidity makes it easier to keep those invertebrate species, such as wood lice, worms and springtails, um, because all of these are adapted to high humidity environments. But that does not mean that you cannot um, achieve success with a bioactive system, keeping a reptile from a more arid environment or even a desert. So, as I just said, the invertebrates required for a bioactive system tend to like higher humidity, um, but the reptiles or whatever that you're going to be keeping in the bioactive system in this case are not going to like that whatsoever. For example, bearded dragons or corn snakes, if you keep those too humid then they can get respiratory infections, so trying to create a naturalistic setup and then keeping it humid just is going to be completely counterproductive. Despite this though, it doesn't mean that bioactive systems are completely impossible for these species and in today's video um, I'm going to be talking about how you can find ways around this and what I do to keep my um, desert and arid species in bioactive enclosures. Now something you can do from the get-go just to make life easier for yourself is to select um, invertebrate species that don't need as high a humidity as the ones that are typically thought of as going in bioactive enclosures. Now, if you've kept any reptiles or amphibians or the like at all, then you'll probably have heard a lot of these things I'm going to talk about um, because they are sort of staple feeders in the hobby, but they do do just a fantastic job um, in bioactive enclosures as well as they do for being food for our pets. Now, such species include worms like mealworms and Mario worms, which are the same thing as superworms, um, and they'll turn into beetles. Um, the, all the life cycle stages are perfectly fine. Um, then there's some other smaller species, um, buffalo worms, which sound like they'd be massive, but they're actually tiny. Um, domestic beetles and their larvae, which are traditionally used in taxidermy, actually. So these I am, um, I haven't got any of those at the minute, but I'm planning on getting some for my corn snake setup, and I'll be talking about that in a future video, and um, within the bioactive basics series. Um, but then you've got different species of cockroach can work. Um, dubias are good, and um, there's some other species. Obviously, if you're going to do the cockroaches, you want to make sure that they're legal where you live, and also if they escape, that it's not warm enough for them to survive. Um, you can use crickets in small numbers. Now, crickets are a little bit iffy because they can be quite aggressive and they do chirp and that. But I've got them in my bearded dragon's enclosure just by mistake, really, because, you know, he's not caught some. They've ended up living in there. And they don't harm him because there's plenty of stuff for them to eat, preferentially to nibble in on my dragon. Um, but honestly, I maybe wouldn't put crickets in every setup. For example, um, if the inhabitant is potentially going to eat them and you know that it's got like a gut infection or something, there's a chance of reinfection there, which is something to think about. And there again, if the inhabitant won't eat the crickets, you've got to be prepared for the population getting really big. So, you know, they're a bit iffy, but they're definitely something worth thinking about. And then there are some species of isopod that you can use as well. Um, I like to use the giant orange ones and some people use zebra isopods but I haven't been able to get a hold of those so I don't use them but some of those do um, tolerate um, lower humidity than their cousins. Now bearing in mind what I've just talked about, um, in the case of some really dry systems, so for example for bearded dragons and neuromastics and the like, um, it is just going to be too dry even for those 
um, really dry loving species to do really well. Um, at least well enough to clear up the waste that the animal's going to produce. So you still have to support them in a sort of supplementary way. Now through my own experimentation, I found out that the number one thing you can do is just provide them with a moist hideaway. Um, the first thing that will help you out really is the water bowl. Now I do have a water bowl right about here. Um, you'll see it's full of stuff at the minute because my bearded dragon's actually in brumation and I've just been keeping away from it and then right before he went to hide away he kicked a load of stuff in it which he does pretty much daily when he's awake but that's beside the point. Um, water bowls I find just because they're a moist environment and you're gonna spill some water around them um, water does tend to collect underneath them and whatever you do you're gonna find that wood lice and stuff um, if you put them in the enclosure it'll start breeding under there so you can sort of use that as like a canary in a mine type of thing if you lift up your water bowl and it's moist and you're not seeing anything you need to give the custodians a bit of a helping hand but if you lift it up and there's all wood lice running out each time then you know you're doing something right. So taking a look in my corn snakes enclosure if I lift up this bowl you'll probably be able to see some stuff. Um, you might first notice that there is actually a piece of carrot that's decided to grow under there but that is not to do with this video. Um, now I'll have to zoom in but I can actually see some springtails. So if I zoom right in, you can see that there are springtails living under this bowl. Um, and springtails are notorious for needing high humidity. So the fact that I've got them living under here just shows you how useful a big water bowl can be. Um, this is one of the large ones by Exoterra. Um, so just keeping that damp under there can really help. But honestly, that is not going to be enough for all of the custodians living in the system. So a feature you may have noticed in most of my arid setups is that I have a nice big slab of just flat cork bark um, lying down and underneath it there's loads of damp sphagnum moss. Now um, I, I apologise in advance if this is going to be shaky but um, because this creates a nice um, moist microclimate all the invertebrates really like to hide under there and if I lift this up you should be able to see them or at least I hope you will. Um, you can see loads of wood lice living under there, um, plenty up on that roof, not sure if you can see them. Um, but there is all sorts that I can see, there's the giant orange wood lice, the tropical greys, um, I, I can spot a couple of mealworms living under there. It's just a really nice microclimate for them and it seems to serve them really well. Now, now that I've shown you um, where the custodians like to hang out in the arid systems, um, basically all it is to keep them alive now is some simple maintenance. So I like to feed mine with Arcadia's custodian fuel. Um, I like to use this inside the enclosures because they're pelleted, so you can just have a look at them and see if they're disappearing a lot. Um, I use different stuff in my cultures, which I'll make another video on, but this is great for inside the vivarium. And then also, um, a couple of times a week, I will lift up this and just spray it down with a mister to keep it humid. And the entire enclosure, this is my bearded dragon's one, um, I spray it down once a week. And my corn snakes enclosure I do twice a week, um, just to create some overall humidity spikes. Now, some people would never recommend doing that. They'd think that the humidity is going to induce infection straight away. And in a non-bioactive system, that is definitely possible. Because in a sterile setup, getting it wet, you're basically just asking mould to grow. But in a setup like this, where you've got all the microfauna and invertebrates that are going to keep on top of that, there's basically no risk and a little humidity spike once or twice a week is going to be a good thing. So I've got a couple of the um, custodian pellets right here um, and I'm just going to lift this up and chuck them in for the custodians to munch on and then I will just grab my sprayer and give it all a nice spray down. So just to illustrate how important this spraying down occasionally and um, just how important that really is, 
Um, I can actually see straight away after spraying it. Um, there's a mealworm beetle, a type of darkling beetle, has come out straight away and is lapping up the water. And they're not too far away. Um, there is a Mario or Superworm beetle, which is another type of darkling beetle, has come out straight away to lap up that water. Um, you never really see them come out at all, apart from when you spray. Um, so it is really, really useful just to get an idea on what's living in the system. And um, everything does benefit. So honestly guys, trying to keep a bioactive system that's arid isn't that much harder than trying to keep one that's tropical or humid. As long as you provide the custodians somewhere to retreat to, um, give them a drink once in a while and give them that little bit of helping hand from the custodian fuel pellets, um, you shouldn't encounter any problems. I've been keeping my leopard gecko bioactive for over a year now, nearly a year and a half actually. Um, I've had my bearded dragon bioactive for a few months, um, my corn snake bioactive for quite a while now, and honestly, they are the golden rules. Keep the custodians fed, keep them um, somewhere where they've got a nice bit of humidity to retreat to, and just sit back and enjoy. So with a few parting glances at a cricket, um, that is pretty much this video. Um, I decided to make this as a special video even though I've done a Custodian Bioactive Basics episode in the past because actually um, keeping um, Custodians in dry systems is something that I get asked about quite a lot and so I thought that it'd be um, a good idea to make an entire video dedicated to it. Anyway guys, I hope that you did enjoy this video and if you did it would help me out a lot if you left a like and seriously do consider subscribing if you want to see more content like this in the near future. But for now, this is it and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.